from the hills, it widens there at Laurel Canyon Boulevard, continuing through Hollywood, and then over to the left, going east for about another quarter mile to the east, going to Virgil Avenue, and there it will merge into Sunset Boulevard. And then that Sunset Boulevard will continue the rest of the way for downtown Los Angeles. buses that will take you up to the observatory and then back down again. And that corner there on the left hand side is where you'll find one of our subway stations for the Metro Red Line subway. Also the um, number two bus for the Metro and the 207 for the Vermont Avenue. So um, Buses and subways will get you here to that corner. If you don't have a car and you're visiting, auto transportation is very easy to get from one place to another. On the left hand side, we also have one of the finest children's hospitals in America. Children's Hospital of Angeles, the 1940s, where the earth has grown in size, more additional clinics, more specialized medicines for children, and a large medical facility here on both sides of us. Eyes are permanent, how the location here. Scientology, on the left hand side, one of their main centers. Now that big, big blue building over there, that used to be a very famous hospital called Cedars of Lebanon. The Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, a very fine hospital for many years. But then they merged with another medical group, moving a little further to the west right on the border of West Hollywood and Beverly Hills, now known as the Cedar sinai Medical Center. Cedar sinai Medical Center, one of the finer medical facilities here in California. Because of its proximity, Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, Bel Air, also known as Salt, the Hospital to the Stars. I just passed the Sunset Bronson Studios, where you'll also find Netflix, the white buildings here. Along with some older buildings that have been restored. And the Blue Studio started up on the left hand side here back in 1928. Columbia Pictures started making movies in the late 1920s. Buildings back behind the entrance gate there on the left where it is now the Sunset Gower Studio. Columbia Pictures, now owned by Sony, are located way to the west of us in Culver City. Sunset Gower Studios, over the years, many popular television shows, 
Fred Tarantino's movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? No. And that building over there on the left-hand side with all the kind of psychedelic things on it. They used that building for the, uh, well, some scenes and uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That building was originally a very large nightclub restaurant on the Moulin Rouge. Then that uh, was used for television shows. Then it was used for the rock music. Rock music was there with lots of these there. On the right hand side, we see a Chase Bank building down the right corner. That used to be the beginning of Paramount Pictures back in 1913. And they're about two blocks up Vine Street here, just past where the Chase Bank, the bank building is now. And uh, that was um, where Paramount Pictures began, making silent films and making enough money by 1926. They were able to buy that large piece of property that they're now on over on Melrose Avenue. For many years, it was a very popular theater, Cinerama Dome. Pandemic um, have so many people away from the theaters that um, that closed. Rumor has it some new people will be um, buying it, reopening it. We'll see. Building here on the left hand side with black glass windows is our Hollywood Bureau for CNN, Cable News Network. Building coming up on the right hand side is our entire room. Opened in 1923 as the Hollywood Athletic Club, Gentlemen's Fitness Club. Back then, among the uh, members of the Athletic Club, Luna Valentino, Clark Gable, Johnny Weiswell, who played Tarzan in the movies in the 1930s and early 1940s, John Wayne, Rob Disney. Well, it's been a couple of restaurants, <clears throat> a nightclub. Across the street, building there with a red tile roof, right across the street, built in 1928. It's a uh, local landmark. But in 1942, through those gates, Par uh, Warner Brothers came over here from their studio in Burbank at that time. And um, they filmed scenes from the classic film Casablanca, Humphrey Bogart. Amy Herbert, Rod Rains, all the others too. A yeah, wonderful movie. But here, this was Rick's Cafe, Humphrey Bogart's casino and restaurant in the movie Casablanca. Very popular restaurant here now called Superbo. Not long after the church opened in the public, two rather famous celebrities were married here. Simon Street actress Mary Pickford, Mary Simon Street actor Douglas Fairbanks here at Dutton Sacrament. In Jazz past Dutton Sacrament Church, we have this interesting phenomenon called Crossroads of the World. When it opened in 1936, it was actually called the world's first shopping mall. On both sides of the center building that was designed to look like a little steamship are boutiques. A lot of international boutiques here in Crossroads. The center building 
actually used uh, over the very first opening scenes of the film, L.A. Confidential. Daniel DeVito's character in this Hush magazine were located right behind the glass um, the center part of the center building. Orchards of citrus trees. Students rode up on horseback or, or arrived in horse and buggies to get to their classes back then. Hollywood High School was a white building in the middle of the orchards. Slowly the area started changing from agricultural to residential. As it did, Hollywood High School started growing in size too, which you see today. Over the years, Hollywood High School has graduated quite a number of celebrities, too. They include a mixture of older buildings and newer buildings. Opened in 1989, all the latest guitars and accessories. Out in front of the entrance, you'll find the famous rock rock. Entrance of famous guitarists and rock bands that have been inducted into the rock rock. You can come back on your own and take a look and see how many of those people you recognize. And around the rock rock are guitars and their plastic cases donated to the guitar center by famous guitarists. Famous comedy talents have performed here at the Lab Factory.
Then the Grand Popper Comedy Club. This is a legendary club to a comedy store 51 years ago. Comedian Sammy Shore and his wife Mitzi purchased what had been a very popular nightclub here on Sunset Boulevard called Ciro's. Ciro's went out of business. So Sammy and Mitzi bought it, restored it, remodeled it, turned it into a comedy club called the Comedy Store. Over the years, so many famous comedy talents, now comedy legends, have been here, and many more comedy talents are here. Sammy and Mitch are both gone, but their two sons, comic actor Polly Shore and his brother Peter, now operate the comedy store. buildings along the right hand side and some new buildings along the left. Right on both, so shy and extra French cuisine and, and petite court. On the right hand side, people enjoying uh, Sunday brunch. Early arrivals here for Sunday brunch at BBCM Central Hooker Baking Candles. I don't know why. On the left hand side, organic Mexican cuisine at Turkaya. Very popular place for Saturday and Sunday brunch. A little indoor patio area here. On the left hand side is the Yves Lay. Now we're coming up to an area of very popular section of sunset nightclubs. And specialty shops and we've seen some here too. For one very famous nightclub, I could be here much longer. I left inside the bike room. Many years ago it was owned by Johnny Depp until Halloween 1993 when young actor River Phoenix collapsed and died of a drug overdose on the sidewalk there. Johnny Depp sold the club, but now this whole section is going to be gone. It's going to be replaced with a new hotel. On the right hand corner, very famous nightclub here is the Whiskey Gogo. Whiskey Gogo opened in 1964. Many, many famous performers have here, been here early in their careers. Actually, the first time Jim Morrison and the Doors performed on the Sunset Strip was here at the Whiskey Gogo. They were the house band. Jimi Hendrix, Buffalo's Johnny Rivers, Martin Crew, Guns N' Roses, many, many others. It's the only nightclub I know of that's been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. Back on the front of the building right there commemorates the special honor given to the Whiskey A Go Go. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay? Got it? Okay. Of course, now many of these groups are dimensional. But it's One small club is the Roxy. Here on the right hand side, oh, many, many famous performers. And around the 
run out of the letter E, so they put a three in there. I think that makes sense when I come back and take a look at it again. 